In this video, we are going to discuss the so-called axial groups. The axial groups are the point group symmetries of linear molecules. For an example of a linear molecule, we have things such as dioxygen, O2, carbon monoxide, and acetylene. For any diatomic molecule, the only possible uh, structure would be linear. So diatomic molecules will invariably belong to one of the axial groups. If you have a polyatomic molecule, for it to belong to one of the axial groups, every single atom has to be in a line. So let's look at what these particular axial groups are. There are two different ones. One is called C infinity V, and the other is D infinity H. These are the two and only two possible point group assignments for linear molecules. Let us first consider the linear molecule carbon monoxide, which we recognize is a heteronuclear diatomic molecule. We can imagine that along the linear line, we have the z-axis here. One important thing to consider is, even though the letters C and O have considerable size, we consider the carbon and oxygen atoms to be point particles. So this particular geometry has only one dimension along the z-axis. In the x and y axes, there is no dimension at all. Therefore, if we were to look down this particular axis, what we would see is an infinitesimally small oxygen atom in front and a carbon atom behind it, then remember, since they're point particles, they would take up essentially no space. Now, one way we can represent these is to make it easier to see, even though we recognize that they are points, is to think of it as a circle. So we can imagine that the oxygen atom in front is a circle and the carbon atom behind it is a circle hidden behind there. And we want to imagine what happens if we take our molecule and we were to rotate it counterclockwise. And we notice something peculiar happens here, because no matter how much we rotate, whether we rotate by 360 degrees, a C1, whether we do a C2, which is 180 degrees, C6, which is 60 degrees, no matter what we do, a circle will always look identical. Therefore, rather than write out the sequence of C1, C2, C3, write all those particular combinations out, since there are an infinite number, we somewhat abuse notation and we write this as the single high order rotation axis of C infinity. So C infinity means that any possibility of this will be a symmetry operation of the group. And we will only get this particular symmetry operation when we have a linear molecule. So for our drawing up here, this is our high order rotation axis is this particular rotation around the Z axis. We also look for other symmetry operations. We would notice that, again, looking down the Z axis, if we were to make a mirror plane going in the X, Z plane, for example, or the Y, Z plane, that this side of the circle is reflected into that side of the circle. So therefore, we are going to have a mirror plane that cuts slice along the plane of the board for the way we've drawn the carbon monoxide molecule up here. But not only can we draw it along there, we can draw it along this way. And again, we have an infinite number of these mirror planes. Now notice that the high order rotation axis is the z-axis, and the mirror planes all include the z-axis. Since the z-axis is included, the high order rotation axis is included 
in the plane. It has to be a vertical mirror. So you notice that among the symmetry operations for carbon monoxide, not only do we have this C infinity uh, high order rotation axis, you also have an infinite number of sigma v's. And because you have a high order rotation axis and we have these particular v's, that's going to lead to our terminology of describing this particular group as C infinity v. Now one last thing just to double check, whenever we have a high order rotation axis, uh, we always want to double check to see if there are any C2s that are perpendicular to that high order rotation axis. If there are, then it tells us we have a D group of some type. So where would this hypothetical C2 be if there were such a C2 that is perpendicular? So if it were going to be perpendicular, it would be along. So this way, it's going to have to be perpendicular to the Z axis. So if there were a C2, it would have to be along this particular axis here. Well, let's put a C2 as a question mark. But we notice that if we were to do that, this would swap oxygen into carbon. Oxygen and carbon are not the same. Therefore, there is no C2 that is perpendicular, normal to Z. So therefore, this is not a D group of any type. So we are left with the point group assignment of C infinity V for carbon monoxide. The next molecule that we would like to consider is carbon dioxide. And again, we know from the SEPR theory and other considerations that carbon dioxide is a linear molecule. You can define the axes along which it lies as the z-axis in this particular case. And again, we would notice that if we perform any sort of rotation around the z-axis, whether it's a C2, C3, C4, the molecule is going to look identical. And again, this is a consequence of the fact that atoms are point particles. So if I rotate a point by any particular angle, it's still going to look identical. So therefore, You've noticed that this particular molecule also has a high order rotation axis that is a C infinity. But again, we want to check, as we always do, once we've found the high order rotation axis for a molecule, to see is there a C2 that is perpendicular to it. So in this case, we'd be looking for a C2 that would go through the central carbon atom. And if there were such a C2, go along here. So we're looking for a C2 about that particular axis. In this particular case, we can draw one and call this the x-axis if we like. And we notice that if we do this particular C2 operation, that carbon is along the axis, so it's not affected. The rightmost oxygen is turned into the leftmost oxygen. The leftmost oxygen swings around to this. So if I were to do a C2 along this particular axis, the molecule will look identical to how it looked before. Therefore, it tells us that this particular C2 is a symmetry operation of the group. So since I have a high order rotation axis that's a C infinity, and I have a C2 that is perpendicular to it, what this tells me immediately is that I have some sort of a D infinity group. The last bit we need to positively identify it is to look for mirror planes. Now, just as in the carbon monoxide molecule, we have an infinite number of mirror planes that kind of slice through the group, uh, the molecule this way, in the plane of the board that go along the z-axis. So we can definitely find sigma v's, but what we're interested in, is there a sigma h? Is there a mirror plane that is perpendicular to the high order rotation axis? If there were such a mirror plane, it would go along this particular plane here, and it turns out we have one, because such a mirror plane would reflect the leftmost oxygen into the rightmost oxygen, 
and we reflect the central carbon into itself. So since we have a sigma H and we have a D infinity uh, group, this allows us to assign the point group assignment of carbon dioxide to the other axial group, D infinity H. One thing is very important. There are two and only two axial groups. It is either going to be in D infinity H or C infinity V. Be careful that you do not switch the H and the V. If you were to try to make a D infinity V or a C infinity H group, those groups do not exist. So they could never possibly be the correct answer to a question. I thank you for your attention. Have a good one.